While Wall Street analysts fixated on Tesla's next big launch and Chinese media hyped BYD's latest concept car, a tiny Indian startup quietly pulled off a stunt so audacious it stunned the entire auto industry. For less than the price of a new laptop, roughly US dollars 2099, the Yakuza Mini EV rolled onto the streets of Mumbai and flipped every long-held belief about electric vehicles upside down. How could a full electric car cost about one-tenth of Tesla's promised affordable Model 2? And why did almost nobody outside India see it coming? The global shockwave hit within hours of the unveiling. News feeds from CNN to TechCrunch blasted out the headline, India builds the world's cheapest electric car. Commentators scrambled for explanations, comparing the Yakuza to the Ford Model T moment for the EV era. Meanwhile, Twitter timelines lit up with disbelief. Some called the sticker price a typo, while others accused the company of selling a glorified golf cart. But the photographs told a different story, a compact, fully road-legal hatchback weaving nimbly through Mumbai traffic. If this little car was real, the ramifications for every legacy automaker were enormous. And that was only the beginning. India's electric awakening had been gathering speed for years, but most outsiders dismissed it as background noise. Between 2020 and 2023, annual EV sales inside the country lapped by more than 50%, topping 1.5 million units. Scooters led the parade, yet four-wheelers were the fastest climbing newcomers. Suddenly, Tata's Nexon EV became a common sight in Bengaluru. Mahindra's XUV400 zipped through Pune, and cozy urban chargers popped up in mall basements from Kochi to Kanpur. Subsidies under the Fame 2 program shaved thousands of rupees off purchase prices, while road tax waivers turned skeptical buyers into instant converts. In short, an entire ecosystem took root almost overnight. Still, nobody predicted the leap from affordable to absurdly cheap until the Yakuza Mini appeared. Pulling off that price required a kind of ruthless simplicity, usually reserved for budget smartphones, not automobiles. First, every major component, from battery pack to body panels, was sourced, stamped, or molded inside India. No container ships from Shanghai, no import duties, no fickle foreign suppliers. Then the engineers waged war on complexity. Strip out expensive LiDAR sensors, trade exotic alloys for locally available steel, ditch the oversized touchscreens that inflate costs by hundreds of dollars. Even the assembly line echoed India's famed Jugad mentality. A smaller plant, fewer robots, highly trained technicians who could spot weld a chassis or troubleshoot a controller on the fly. The result, a production cost low enough to make established OEM spreadsheets look bloated. Yet raw thrift alone can't keep a car on the road. The real wizardry sits beneath the floorboards in a 14 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack. Yes, the same chemistry Tesla now favors for its mass market trims. LFP cells resist overheating, shrug off brutal tropical summers, and survive thousands of charge cycles before fading. Paired with a modest 18 kilowatt motor, the Mini delivers a city-friendly range of 120 to 150 kilometers. Commuters plug it into a household socket overnight or juice it to 80% in three hours using the company's wall box. A basic but vigilant battery management system tracks cell health and slices power if thermal readings spike, slashing the fire risk that still haunts some high-end EVs. In other words, safe, reliable tech, minus the Hollywood flourish. Inside, expectations reset again. You won't find a panoramic sunroof or a gaming-grade infotainment tablet. What greets you instead is a clean digital cluster that shows speed, remaining range, and charge status in crisp block numerals. A Bluetooth-enabled head unit lets you stream playlists or answer calls without fumbling with cables. Air conditioning comes standard because India's summers demand it, and a rear-view camera with helpful parking guidelines makes sliding into micro-parking bays a breeze. No superfluous sparkle, no paper feature software locks, just the essentials that turn a bargain into a daily driver. But perhaps the most surprising element is the startup behind the badge. Yakuza Auto isn't a legacy conglomerate dipping its toes into green tech. It is the brainchild of three former engineering classmates from Chennai who quit comfortable jobs to chase a near ridiculous dream. An EV every delivery rider, tuition teacher, or medical courier could afford. 
They sketched early prototypes in a garage, negotiated microloans from state banks, and convinced tier two suppliers to experiment with plastics strong enough to double as structural supports. Friends called them reckless, rivals snickered, yet a few angel investors saw merit in their radical cost down philosophy, and the gamble paid off. None of it would have worked without government tailwinds. Delhi's ambitious target, having 30% of new car sales be electric by 2030, pushed ministries to shower startups with tax holidays, discounted land leases, and expedited approvals. Pair that with Make in India incentives slashing duties on locally sourced EV parts, and the Mini's pricing puzzle finally resolves itself. In effect, policy transformed what might have been a niche curiosity into a scalable product, poised to flood domestic streets and soon foreign ones. That looming export potential is exactly what ruffled feathers from Detroit to Shenzhen. Analysts fret that fleets of ultra-cheap Yakuza minis could infiltrate emerging markets across Africa, Southeast Asia, and Latin America, undercutting small gas cars and eating into the entry-level EV share Tesla hopes to conquer. Rumors swirl that multiple global car makers have already lobbied for stricter crash norms. Some say it's an attempt to stall a wave of Indian imports before it gains unstoppable momentum. Whether those whispers are true or not, one fact remains. The paradigm that only high-income buyers can drive electric just shattered. So where does that leave the industry? Facing an uncomfortable choice. Either learn from India's playbook of laser-focused frugality or risk getting blindsided in the very market slated to fuel the next decade of growth. Because while many companies promise affordable electric mobility someday, one tiny startup has done it today, and the ripple effects are only beginning to spread. In the end, the Yakuza Mini EV isn't merely a cheap car. It's a blunt reminder that technological revolutions don't always arrive with fireworks and billion-dollar budgets. Sometimes they slip through side streets in the middle of the night, humming quietly on recycled lithium cells, daring anyone to ignore them. The giants looked one way, India moved the other, and now the world is scrambling to catch up.